Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to explain the equation of our MRS, so our marginal rate of substitution, between two goods I have just good X and good Y. We find our MRS by taking the marginal utility associated with good X and dividing that by the marginal utility of good Y. So I'm going to derive this formula in this video. Now in this case, just to be clear on the interpretation, I have here MRS subscript XY. So the marginal utility of X is on the numerator and the marginal utility of Y is on the denominator. So this tells us about the rate at which we are trading good Y for exactly one unit of good X holding utility constant. So if our MRS came up as two, for instance, this tells us that we would trade one unit of good X for two units of good Y. To say this another way, we value one unit of good X equal to two Y. Now really the trick to understanding why this is our formula for our MRS is to first acknowledge that the slope of our indifference curve when X is on the horizontal axis and Y is on the vertical is actually equal to the negative of our MRS. You might alternatively see this condition as the MRS is equal to the absolute value of the slope. It doesn't really matter. The key is that the slope of our indifference curve will be a negative number, but our MRS is in positive terms. So we remove the negative. The connection between our MRS and the slope of our indifference curve gives us a strategy. We first find a formula for the slope of the indifference curve. And in doing that, we're indirectly then finding our formula for our MRS. So that's the strategy. Now we find the slope of a line by taking rise over run as we move between two points along that line. So maybe on my diagram here, maybe between two points A to B. And in this diagram, because Y is on the vertical axis, the rise value will be the change in Y and the run value will be our change in X since X is the variable on the horizontal axis. Now we also know that as we move between point A and point B, but utility doesn't change. So the change in U, utility is equal to zero. And this is because every point along an indifference curve corresponds to exactly the same level of utility. To say this another way, utility is being held constant as we move along an indifference curve. So we can put some maths down then. As we move between A to B, the change in utility, our change in U is equal to zero. But now also note that we can also decompose this change in utility into two separate parts. So on our diagram, as we move from A to B, we're decreasing our consumption of Y, that will decrease utility. And we're increasing our consumption of X, that will increase utility. And actually we know that these two effects must exactly cancel each other out since the overall change in utility is equal to zero. Let's write this out on the left hand side. Our change in utility as we move between A and B can be thought of as the change in utility due to our change in our consumption of our good X plus the change in the utility due to our consumption of Y and the sum of these two effects must be equal to zero. Now we can rewrite this a little bit more succinctly. Our change in utility due to our change in our consumption of X can be thought of as the marginal utility of X multiplied by our change in X. To explain this, we can think about our marginal utility of X as telling us about how a one unit change in X or a marginal change in X affects the amount of utility we have. And we multiply that by how much X actually changes by. So as an example, if our marginal utility of X was equal to four, this tells us that when X increases by one, utility increases by four. So if X increases by five units, this means that the total change in utility due to X changing by five units is equal to, well, four times five, that's 20. We can do a similar sort of decomposition with our change in utility due to our change in Y. Our change in utility due to our change in Y can be thought of as the marginal utility of Y multiplied by how much Y actually changes by. And we know that the sum of these two changes must be equal to zero. All right, with this condition in hand, it's then pretty easy to now just solve for the slope. I'm first going to move that marginal utility of Y multiplied by the change in Y just to the right hand side of the equation. So we end up with our marginal utility of X multiplied by our change of X is equal to the negative of our marginal utility of Y times our change in Y. When I moved it to the right hand side, I had to take it away from both sides. So we get that negative. 
We can then divide both sides by the negative of our marginal utility of y. So it cancels out on the right. And then we can divide out the change in x, which is on the left-hand side. And we get the negative of our marginal utility of x divided by our marginal utility of y is equal to the change in y divided by the change in x. But the change in y over the change in x is just equal to our slope. So we found an expression for the slope of our indifference curves. And in doing this, we've essentially found then an expression of our marginal rate of substitution. We just take the absolute value or we put another negative on it. So our MRS is equal to the ratio of our marginal utility of X divided by the marginal utility of Y. So that's it. That's the derivation of our formula for our MRS. Now I will say before I finish the video, when we deal with curved indifference curves like I have here, we don't really talk, if we're doing it properly, about finding the slope by using discrete changes like I've done here. The move from A to B is a discrete change. Instead, when we do it properly, we essentially think about rise over run in terms of infinitesimally small changes, so in terms of derivatives. The basic concept is still the same, and I've just used the larger change here as a heuristic, so as an aid to explanation. Once we have that explanatory part all done though, it's a very easy to think about all these changes just in terms of infinitesimally small changes in terms of derivatives. In particular, our marginal utility of x will be equal to the partial derivative of our utility function with respect to x. And the marginal utility of y is equal to the partial derivative of our utility function with respect to y. So that's it. That's the, that's the video. I hope that it helped. If it did, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much to my subscribers and everyone who watches my videos. I hope you guys are doing well.